Make a date with Rev. Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online. Truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe of Living Streams bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. And uh, today I'd like to capture my thoughts on glorious provocations. Glorious provocations. Ah, provocations that are glorious, of course. Some are, some do. Some are glorious. And some provocations, yeah, maybe, maybe if God allows a gun to take a po 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 to somebody. But here's the interesting thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, there's a story that pans out of a woman called Anna and Penina and Elkanah, a mighty man. A good man? I mean, married two wives? Hmm, interesting, you know. And the Bible said, now Penina had children and Anna did not have children. And uh, every time they, it was time for sacrifice, every time they came to the house of God, that was when Penina chose to rub it in about Anna's barrenness. And she will rub it in, and she will rub it in, and she will rub it in. And the Bible uh, 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 put it, uh, she, uh, uh, Penina provoked her soul. And she made Anna's life miserable. At the place of joy, at the place of entertainment, at the place of relief, at the place of release, at the place of blessing, that is the house of God. That is when Anna ends up crying, and she ends up crying. That is when Penina makes sure that Anna will never get the joy of fellowship with God and fellowship with man. She would always make sure. And she would use that occasion to rub it in concerning her barrenness. And that was Penina's listening. And the Bible said she used to do it constantly. And until one time when they went for that sacrifice, that particular type of uh, time of the year, when they went for the sacrifice, as they have been doing at other times, Penina then swung into action. I'm going to rub it in. And she began to, to provoke Anna. And she began to do things that to make Anna bitter, that to make Anna, Anna unhappy. She reminded Anna of what she didn't have. She rubbed it in. She made it sure that she was pouring acid into a, a wound already in the heart of Anna. She was pouring pepper into it. Everything that she could do, innuendos or whatever it is, she just kept throwing it at Anna. And the Bible said she had provoked Anna to an extent that Anna could not eat. She was so sad she couldn't eat. And then she got up and said, all right, I'm going into the temple. I'm going to the tabernacle. I'm going to pray. I'm going to talk to that God who is up there. He must look at my situation. He must look at my issues. He must look at my circumstances and he must step in. For that time, she said, okay, enough is enough. I'm not going to sit and cry. I'm not going to walk in depression. I'm not going to walk in despondency. I'm not going to walk in discouragement. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to go to the God who has a solution, who has a capability of doing something about my situation. And then she gets into the house of God and began to pray. I must admit to you, wild prayer. The priest in the house had never seen that kind of prayer before. But she raised the voice and she began to call upon God. And going to pour out her heart, pour out the bitterness, and pour out the pain, and pour out the frustration, and pour out the issues. And she, was just, she just kept pouring. She just kept pouring. And guess what? By the time Anna left, miracle was on the way. So you know something? I would, if I were somebody else, I would hate Penina with a passion. I would, I would look at Penina uh, with an eye like, you, 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 you silly woman, you wicked woman. But here's the interesting thing. Penina was a glorious provocation for Anna to get Samuel. So, Penina pushed Anna. Penina met you drove Anna to the place where Anna couldn't resist but talk to God. Sometimes there are some people who provoke us. There are some people who remind us of what we don't have. Or there are things that will remind us of what we, we lack. There are things that, I mean, there are things, people who will drive it in. And people who will call us names and give us all, all kinds of uh, names and all those other things. Ridicule us and mock us. Make us the object of public opprobrium. Make us the object of public ridicule. Oh, they will do everything. But you know what? They are provoking us for a testimony. 
All they're doing is pushing us towards our God. Telling, going to our God, calling upon our God and telling our God, do something for us. I know what I'm talking about. Because I have lived it. And I know what God can do. And sometimes those people, instead of looking at them through the eyeglasses of antagonism or through the eyeglasses of hatred and jealousy or whatever, or, or pain and bitterness. No. See them as the, as the catalyst to the miracle that God wants to give to you. See them as a l'agent provocateur, that the people who provoked you. So you know what? Penina was a glorious provocation for the miracle of Samuel. So I won't judge them, I won't criticize them, I won't condemn them. I thank them for provoking me to places in God I never thought I could ever get to. So thank the penniness of your life and thank them for provo provoking you. Their provocation was a glorious provocation. See you later.